Hello, today we will discuss about statistical mechanics. So, statistical mechanics is basically the study of a bulk material, the properties of a bulk material, and this bulk material consists of a large number of microscopic constituents. So, actually, if you are thinking about a bulk material, having some dimensions, I mean millimeter or in some centimeter. So, this bulk material may be copper, may be silver, may be silicon or may be in the liquid form. So, this is made of some number of microscopic particles. In some of the cases, this may be atoms, this may be molecules, this may be electrons, depending on the properties of the material. Now, their behavior, the individual particles behavior plays the most important role of the bulk. Now, what are the bulk properties? In simple way, one can think about the bulk properties as pressure. If you are talking about gaseous pressure, is the most important part. Obviously, volume can also be. Sometimes it depends on temperature. Along with this, one can think about conductivity, electrical conductivity or uh, resistivity in the system. It may be thermal conductivity. It may be mechanical property. One can think about modulus of the mechanical property. So, these are defined by the constituent particles. So, obviously the individual particle is not playing any role when you have large number of particles. So, the large we are talking about large maybe is in the order of say some Avogadro's number or even more than that or in that particular order. So, how these individual particles are behaving, it is not playing an important role, but how the large number of particles are behaving, this gives the properties of this particle. So, this is the idea about the statistical mechanics. Now, to study this one, so we will assume the individual particles having some energy. So, they will be represented in form of energy levels or energy states. Now, we should have to know what is the meaning of energy level and what is the meaning of energy states. Energy level refers to the quantized and discrete amount of energy that a quantum system. Okay, this may be atoms, this may be molecules. So, normally in a system where you are talking about in electron cells or electron orbits, they may be referred as electron energy levels. And energy states, energy states refers to the different possible conditions or configuration that a system can be based on their energy. So, energy states, so just in simple way one can think about, you all know about four quantum numbers, N, L, M, N and M, S, principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. So, depending on the principal quantum number, one can specify the energy level. But you all know, according to Pauli's exclusion principle, so the four quantum numbers will not be same. So, one can just simplify this thing that each discrete set of four quantum numbers designated each energy states. Okay. So, as a whole, they are representing energy levels. But as they have some separate quantum numbers, so this separation, separated energy things will be denoted as energy states. Now comes the concept of macroscopic macrostates and microstates. So the macrostates is a macrostate is the description of a system at a macroscopic level, focusing on its overall observable properties. So, again we have just mentioned about observable properties in temperature, pressure, volume or in other cases the properties, electrical properties, magnetic properties, mechanical properties one can think about. And there is another term which is known as microstate. A microstate is a specific arrangement or the configuration of individual particles in a system. Taking into account about the exact position and moment of the each one. So, when you think about the particles, they are moving, when they are moving, their positions are changing, their velocity will be different, and the momentum is also changing. So, their behavior, the position and momentum behavior, explains the microstates. Microstate provides a detail 
is a description of the individual particles. Now comes the concept of ensemble. An ensemble is a collection of microstates that are compatible with the specific macrostates of a thermodynamic system. It's a collection of microstates. So there are three types of uh, ensembles are available. Microcanonical, canonical and grand canonical ensembles are available. Now the most important part in the statistical mechanics is that we know about the large number of particles and we have some idea about the energy levels and energy states. So one can think about some energy states having some number of particles. So this number of particles they are forming some microstates and as a well, whole they are forming some macrostates. Now for every particle you will have that type of microstates and macrostates. But statistically one can see one of the or few number of this microstates and macrostates will be favorable for. So if you think about if you just compare a good conducting material and a bad conducting material. So in a good conducting material there will be large number of free electrons and in bad conducting material there are less number of free particles, free electrons. Are. So one can just say in simple way that their macrostates and microstates are different in case of good conducting material and in bad conducting materials. So this will be a important factor for explaining the overall properties of the system. So macrostates and microstates plays a very very important role. Here. So obviously the ensemble plays a important role. Now there is a term which is known as thermodynamical probability. So this basically explains the arrangement of the microstates to form the proper macrostates of the system. This is known as a thermodynamical probability. So the capital sigma explains. The total number of accessible microstates corresponding to a system, system this is the macrostates, is known as thermodynamic probability of a system. And it is generally denoted by symbol capital O. Now comes the concept of phase space and density of states. Actually, they are same thing, but in different consideration. So again, one can think about that type of system where you have large number of particles. So particles are moving. So when particles are moving, one can just refer the cases of the phase space. So individual particles are moving. So a, a, a single particle when it is moving, so it has a possibility of See, in three directions they can move along x, y and z direction. Same way if you think about its momentum, actually its velocity, mass into velocity gives the momentum. Same way velocity is possible along x direction, y direction and z direction. So there is another three coordinates available. There are total six possibilities are there for this moment. So the position and momentum can be represented by six possible points. So this is represented as six times. So if you have n number of particles, so the total possibilities is 6 into n. So this is representing phase space. So one can think about a system where some particles are moving. So its position and its momentum, this is a representation of phase space. If this is phase space, then what is density of space? Now, when you think about its position, its momentum, it's really discrete in nature. But in quantum mechanical systems, the so systems are not that type of the systems that it's not they are not, not type of a discrete system. Rather, they are continuous. So at that point, the concept of density of states happens. So one can think about a continuous system. So obviously its position, its momentum, everything is continuous. So the energy can be think about in range, a continuous range. So for that case, one can just represent a single particle in a phase in elementary space. It can be represented as its position, qx, qy and qz. Actually, one can just think about its position, x, y and its z. So in elementary form, this is dx, dy, dz. So we have represented it in form of a generalized coordinate. So we have represented qx, qy and qz. 
and its corresponding momentum Ex, Py, and x. So, as you all know, that uncertainty principle says its position and momentum. If you think about its position and its momentum along this particular direction, so these values is in the order of h in the order of Planck's constant. So, the same equation is applicable for y and py, py and z and pz. So, this gives you h q. Same way, if you just think about the total volume of the system, its position and its momentum. So, there will be px, uh, it's x, y and z and px, py and pz. So, this gives you the total volume of the system. So, this gives the idea about the density of the system. So, to get the total volume of the phase cell, okay, so you need to integrate over the system. So, we are talking about a continuous system, we are integrating over the system. Now, when you are integrating, we need to get the total. Now, the total volume when you are integrating over position, so obviously this gives the physical volume. Okay, physical volume of the system. If this is fair, so this is four third pi r cube. If this is a cube, uh, then uh, this will be l cube or a cube. But physically, this is possible. It's it's position you can get this. But what about this momentum? So, if you are talking about d of px, d of py and d of pz, they don't have in a physical volume, they, they don't have this physical thing, physical essence. But mathematically, it is forming a relation. You have dx square plus py square plus pz square. This is equal to its momentum. So, one can think about the total momentum is basically the summation of momentum along x, momentum along y and momentum along z. So, this is in the form of a sphere. Mathematically or graphically if you plot, you will get a spherical. So, by using this thing, one can calculate what is the density of states in the system. So, we are assuming a sphere of momentum d, momentum p or its radius p and it is increasing by a gap of elementary gap of dp. So, the total number of phase space in the momentum space, total number of phase space in the momentum space is to the microsecond. This is represented as gp dp. So, this is given as v, v is the physical volume dx dy and dz integrated integration. And the momentum for the total momentum of the system integration over Px, Py, and Pz, this is represented by this 4 pi p squared dp. So, how we are representing this one? So, we are initially considered this is a cell, okay, and this is expanding. One can think of what as momentum changes, it is expanding. So, as you have this one, so if you have a sphere like this, so its surface area is given by. 4 pi p square and it is expanding in all directions. So, this is expanding in direction and this expansion is given by dp. This is given as dp. This is expanding dp, dp, dp in all directions. So, the volume is integrate given as dp and if you are integrating this one, you will get the This gives you the idea about the momentum volume. So, just come to this part, you have the momentum p into 4 pi p square dp divided by h cube, h comes to be from this uncertain principle, where in the momentum range of p to p plus dp, just the p and p plus dp. Now, we have assumed the system, the particles are in a random form, they are moving, their, below, their momentum is 0, so their total energy is a form of kinetic energy. So, this is given by p square by 2. So, p is given as under root 2 a p. Now, one can just convert g p into g e. So, the, from momentum space, now we are converting into energy thing. So, the one can just think about the total number of microstates. First, we are calculating total number of phase cells in microstates in a momentum space. Now, we are trying to calculate it energy. Where to? From e to e plus t. So, GED is given, given as. 
So V, this is constant, 1 by H cube, you have 4 pi, this is constant. Just replace P square by P square can be written as 2 M E. So E is the P square divided by, kinetic energy P square divided by 2 M. So P square given as 2 M. Okay. And this dp, when you are integrating over this one, one can get dp as under root m divided by 2e de. This is okay. so in a simplified form, one can get GED is represented by this dimension. So the total number of microsteps per unit energy rate of E plus is given by this particular relation. Now, if you just look at this relation very carefully, one can see h. 4, pi, b and m, they are constant. 4 pi is a numerical value, volume is constant of a particular system, h is the Planck's constant, the standard uh, constant value and m is the mass of the constituent particle. If you are talking about electron, if you are talking about a particular atom, you know the mass, this is constant. So what is variable? This is h. Now one can see this relation g and E, they are related in the form of, so G is proportional to E to the power half. So, the relation is given. So, graphically one can plot the density of states. So, the phase space and density of states, they are closely linked. The phase space volume occupied by a system in classical mechanics is related to the density of states in one mechanics. Now, this is the basic idea about statistical mechanics. So, one can just think about a system, a bulk system. Large number of in particles are there. So, large number of particles, they are placed in different energy level, different energy states. Okay, so from this it forms the concept of microstates and this number of microstate gives you the concept of macrostates. And the combination of macrostates and microstates gives an ensemble in the system. Now when you have large number of energy levels, now one can calculate what is the total number of energy states. So this gives you the energy states in the system. So, if you integrate over a certain energy range, you will get the total number of microstates within the energy. Now, depending on the conditions, the bulk properties are different or one can think about the constituent particles. They will behave different. So, for that case, there are three types of statistical mechanics which explains the properties of the individual particles. So the different statistical mechanics, so the first one is known as the Maxwell Boltzmann. The second one is known as Bose-Einstein and the third one is known as fermi dirac statistics. So we'll start with Bose Einstein. Yeah, of course, we'll start with Maxwell Boltzmann. The Maxwell Boltzmann is basically applicable for the classical system. So, when you just simplify the system, the constituent particle we are considering in a very, very simplified form, then the Maxwell Boltzmann uh, statistics will be applicable. So, what should be the properties of those constituent particles? So, the particles should be indistinguishable, they are separable. So, you can just think about a gas mixture. So, where you have two or three different types of gases are there. So, their particles are distinguishable. They are separate. So, you can easily distinguish. And here, you can place any number of particles. Okay, and in any number of energy states. So, even you can put all the particles in one state. Okay. And other states are vacant. This is applicable. The most important part is that in case of Maxwell Boltzmann, the distribution, which is known as occupancy index, n divided by g. So, n is the number of particles in different states and g representing the number of states is given by this particular relation. So, to be a Maxwell Boltzmann following particles, which are known as Boltzons, 
they must be some sort of classical particles. So when you think about classical particles, they are directly following the laws of F is equal to MA. Or you can just think about it follows the Maxwell's equations. Or other fluid laws they are following. Although they are constituting particles, they are microscopic particles, but still we are talking about their properties are directly following the classical laws. So when you think about the particles are following classical law, obviously there is no concept of wave function for the Maxwell Boltzmann system or the Boltzmann particles. They are classical particles, obviously as they are classical particles, their spin will be zero, that means they are spin less particles. Now, uh, this was a old statistics. It was around 1870 when Maxwell and Boltzmann they were work, they have started working with this thing and they have the formula for this thing for the ideal gas system. So, this was the beginning of the statistical mechanical study where they have assumed a bulk material, a gas bulk material consists of large number of particles and how they are behaving they started with some formula, they started with some concept and this concept comes out in the idea about the statistical mechanics. So, although we know that the constituent particles are quantum particles, but still we start our statistical mechanics with the Maxwell Boltzmann statistical concept because their theories were extended for the quantum mechanical system. Now come to the point. Now again, uh, when we are talking about a system, when we have a bulk system, there will be large number of particles and a large number of energy levels up there. So this energy levels, they are denoted as G1, G2, G3, G4 up to a certain level. So the energy value is E1, E2, E3 up to a certain level. And the number of particles in different energy levels given as N1, N2, N3. Now when they are arranged, so the total energy is given as N into E. That's when one can think about the different energy levels are there. So here we have N1 number of particles and the energy is E1. Then this is N2, the so number of particles is E2. Accordingly they are arranged. So total energy is given as N1 E1 plus N2 E2 for all. So summation over this is given by the total. And obviously, the total number of particles is the summation of the individual energy levels. For Boltzmann particles, so those particles are classical particles are following Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. They are they can be arranged by using this. Now, when you have this arrangement, total number of arrangement, then Maxwell's and Boltzmann use the idea about the most probable distribution. So one can just think about a function and to find its extreme condition, one can differentiate this one, it will be equal to zero and they will find the condition for maxima and minimums. So to get the most probable distribution, you have to dis differentiate this thing with respect to this one and make it equal to zero. So, when you have this one, one can get the most probable distribution of the system. Now, by using some mathematical logic, one can just get the most probable one for the different statistical mechanics. The first one is the Maxwell statistics. So, what they have done? They have taken a natural log over this thing. So, obviously, this is g to the power n. So, n can easily be arranged. So, for that case, they have just get this one in form of natural log. And then they are tried to find their just differentiate with this to get the most probable. So when you are differentiating this one and then the rearranging this one and multiplying with the factor alpha and beta, which were depending on the system, they have got a relation that n is equal to g e to the power minus alpha plus beta. So n is the number of particles in different energy states. G is the number of different energy states and you have the relation exponentially decaying relation. So from that they were able to calculate what is known as Maxwell Boltzmann distribution function. This is given as Fe. Fe is equal to n by g. So what is n by g is an occupation index. How they are arranging this. So just show it is arranged at 1 divided by e to the power alpha plus 
beta e. So it is a decreasing function. So e to the power minus alpha, you know, e to the power minus this function. One can just uh, represent this one. This is as e to the power minus this factor. So this is the most probable distribution for the Maxwell. Then comes the case of Bose-Einstein. So the Bose-Einstein is uh, those particles are following Bose-Einstein statistics. They are basically quantum. Particles. So obviously, when you think about quantum particle, so it will come out with the concept of wave function psi. So when you think about wave function psi, so you really cannot distinguish the particle. So if you are talking about electrons, you really cannot say this electron and that electron. So all the electrons having the same wave function. Their position values are different, but the nature of the wave function is the same inside this certain system, certain condition. So one can just represent as an indistinguishable particle for the bosons and statistics. They are the boson particles. B O S O N boson particles. So now Obviously, as they are quantum particles, so their properties will be denoted as a quantum phenomenon. So, so, when you have a quantum uh, wave function, obviously there will be a spin uh, related to this. But in this case, the spins are not half integral, rather this is zero or integral spin. So, that spin is integral means either zero h cross, one h cross, two h cross, three h cross, cross, one can think about in this form. It's unique of spin. And here the wave functions are symmetric in nature. So symmetric wave functions are depending on the positions. One can just think about the symmetric wave function, it's some sort of a representation like this. One can think about a wave function. Say this is uh, the wave function 1, 2, 3 of different energy states you are denoting 1, 2, 3 up to n. Now, if your wave functions that psi is equal to psi, then this will be considered as a symmetric wave function. And for anti symmetric wave function, the psi will be equal to minus of psi. If these are following this thing, this will be anti symmetric, and in this case, this is symmetric wave function. So, the Bose-Einstein having the symmetric wave function. And obviously the distribution function is given as the index, occupation index is given by 1 by alpha plus beta e to the power alpha plus beta e minus 1. You have an additional term of minus 1. Some examples of uh, bosons are given over there. So photon, phonon and all the mesons particles are the boson. Again, uh, the same concept of calculation of occupation index. So, the number of particles can be arranged here. So, this is given by this particular relation. Then again, you need to find the most probable one which will defy the property. So, this can be calculated by differentiating this one. So, n by g is given you the distribution function. This is the last one is the Fermi Dirac statistics. So again, Fermi Dirac statistics is also following the quantum statistics. So they are indistinguishable particles, and uh, obviously it follows the wave function. But here the wave functions are anti-symmetric in nature. As this is anti-symmetric, obviously this will follow the Pauli's exclusion principle. And the particles having some spin, but the spin is half integral in nature. Electron, proton, neutrons, and all hyperons are the Fermi particles. Just look at this how to calculate this one. So, the total weight, total distribution, one can calculate it by this one for the fermion particles. And the most probable state can be achieved by differentiating this one. So, the occupation index is given by this. So, the distribution function is given by this one. So, one can just see this is 1 by e to the power alpha plus beta e plus 1. So, one can just uh, compile the whole part of this. So, in a statistical mechanics, we are talking about a bulk material. So, this bulk material, so one can assume they are arranged in different levels, different states. 
So this different level and different states gives you the concept of micro states. So large number of micro states gives you the concept of macro states. Now when you have large number of system, so the large number of system means a continuous system in a small region. There will be large number of system, large number of energy levels and states are there. So then comes the concept of phase, phase and density of states. Now one can easily calculate. So in a certain range, what will be the number of energy states available? Now, when you have this one, by using different statistics, depending on the properties of the material, one can choose which statistics it is following. Whether this is Maxwell-Boltzmann, obviously, if you are talking about a gaseous system, one can think, simply think about the Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics. But when you think about other properties of the material, so you may think about either those Einstein statistics or Fermi data statistics, depending on the system, their behavior. Now, we'll check that how they can be used for the study of the, of the bulk. So, we'll take the simplest cases for a material and we'll use the Fermi Dira statistics to explain the problem. Now, here what we are assuming the distribution function is given by this particular relation and we are talking about a system. This is at absolute zero. It's a metallic system where you have a large number of particles. Sometimes used to call the metal gas as we have large number of free electrons available. So they are just behaving like a gaseous system. So although they are not exactly gas, but just assuming you have large particle in a small. So here we will take two cases. In one case T is equal to zero Kelvin and other case T is greater than zero. But in T equal to 0 Kelvin, we have two conditions. What are those two conditions? One is uh, energy, energy of the individual particles is less than Fermi level energy and another is greater than Fermi level energy. So what is the idea about this one? You can just think about the potential box system where the large number of particles are there and they are placed. One can assume that they are placed in different energy. These particles are Okay, the particles are placed. Now we are talking about T equal to 0 Kelvin. And we are just referring a certain energy level as the form of the limit. This is represented as zero. So at T equal to 0, so we we'll check it up to formulable energy. Up to formulable energy, the distribution is 1. Why you are talking about this thing? One can get that one. E is uh, first you check E is greater than this. So if E is greater than EF, so one can write this is equal to 1 divided by E to the power. So this E minus EF, obviously this will give you a positive value. Say this is E to the power X. Just as you mean E to the power X. Divided by KT plus Now our condition is T is equal to 0. The temperature is 0. So it comes, so this particular factor comes e to the power x divided by 0. So this is e to the power infinite. 1 by 0 means e to the power infinite. So this factor becomes 1 divided by e to the power infinite plus 1. So e to the power infinite means one can just simply think about this is infinite. So 1 divided by infinite plus so, obviously, this is 1 by infinite. 1 by infinite gives us, so mathematically one can get 0. And physically one can get that at absolute 0. So, no particles will be available above the particle. But if you are talking about a case T is 0, but formula, if the particles available lesser than Fermi level n. So, obviously, this E minus EF will give you a negative factor. So this minus, this is becomes a negative one, this is minus. So when you have minus, obviously this is e to the power minus of this thing. So this is 1 by e to the power alpha, uh, e to the power infinity. 1 by e to the power infinity means this is equal to C. So one can just assume as this is minus, so this factor becomes C. Earlier one was infinite, but here this factor becomes C. Okay, 
So overall, this factor becomes 0. And so obviously this is 0 plus 1 and you have 1 plus 1. So this becomes 1 in this case. This becomes 1 for the So one can get at t equal to 0. So form formulable EF. This is this is referred as formulable energy. So all the particles available up to formulable energy. Okay. And in the second case, if you are talking about t greater than 0, so for the t greater than 0, the calculation simply becomes E is and we are just considering E is equal to EF greater than 0 or less than 0. So obviously, if you are talking about t greater than 0, so that particular relation, one can just rewrite this thing as 1 divided by, you have the positive value and t is also positive, it, it, it's not 0, so plus 1. Okay, so you have a factor like this. You have a factor like this. But if you have a case E minus EF, so E minus EF means, so E minus EF, this is 0 divided by KT. Now T is not equal to 0. So this factor, 0 divided by something, it gives you 0 over here. So E to the power 0 means this is 1. So you have 1 plus 1, this is. So what it gives that t greater than 0, so you have a probability of 50% particles below Fermi level energy and above Fermi level energy. Now this is the graphical representation of this at t equal to 0 and t greater than 0. What will be the distribution? Obviously t equal to 0, we have this one. So this is the occupied state and this is the unoccupied state. As the temperature increases, so you will you'll see this is shifting. It is shifting from occupied state to unoccupied state. This is increasing. So as the temperature will increase, you will see this will be flatter. Something like this. Earlier at t equal to 0, you have a discrete state function. Uh, so if you are interested, you can calculate the Fermi level energy of the system. So to calculate the Fermi level energy, one can use a simple relation of total number of parts. Now the total number of particles can be given as Ne within a certain energy level dE. This is given as distribution function into density of states dE. Now the distribution function for different statistics, this is difference, but as you are consi considering Fermi distribution function, so this is 1 by exponential E minus EF by KT plus of 1. So in this case, in the metallic system, we are considering Fermi level, uh, Fermi distribution function. So we have the number of particles in density. Now the density of states we have already calculated, density of state is proportional to e to the power half. We have just placed it, density of state, we have this one. Now here we are talking about two density of states, we have two possibilities for two types of electrons, electron plus half and minus half. This is represented by 2 into the density of states. So as we have G, you know the distribution function and then you can easily calculate what will be the total number of particles. Where? At t equal to 0 we are calculating, so our integrating limit will be 0 to EF because beyond uh, EF there will be no particles available. So any this one, so n is given by G divided by this distribution function, G distribution function. We are talking about T 0 Kelvin, so if this is T equal to 0 Kelvin, so this will be equal to 1, all the particles are below formula. So now we need to integrate only over G within the range of 0 to E. So integration, so simply your integration will be E to the power half dS. So arrange this one, one can calculate what will be the total number of particles. Now the most important part is N can easily be calculated by using the chemical concept, by using the concept of Avogadro numbers. One can easily calculate this thing. So this number is known to us. So if you are interested, you can calculate what is the Fermi level energy of the system. So just rearranging this one, this will give you the expression of Fermi level energy at zero. 
Now we can see this is n and this is v. What is v? v is the total volume of the system. So num total number of particles divided by volume. This gives you the concept of density. Okay. So if you know the density, number of particle density, you can calculate the Fermi level energy of the system. Again, if you are really interested, you can calculate what will be the total energy of the system. So again, total energy, I have just mentioned this one, total energy will be N1, E1, plus N2, E2, okay. So actually, it's a summation over N, I, E, I. And for a continuous system, this will be integration over E, N, E, within the energy level E and D, E. So up to 0 to E, F for T equal to 0. Again, we know what is N as f is equal to 1, so a factor is 0, so this will be e into g e. You know what is g e, you can just put it back and you will get an expression for e into e to the power half. e into e to the power half gives us e to the power 3 by 2. Now one can integrate this one and calculate what is the average energy of it. Now if you are referring this particular one, that e to the power 3 by 2, so energy value e to the power 3 by 2, uh, Fermi level energy EF e to the power 3 by 2 is equal to this factor. One can rearrange this one. And when you are integrating this part, e to the power 3 by 2, so this obviously gives you e to the power 5 by 2. This is equal to, this is equal to E plus e to the power three by two. So EF, sorry EF into sorry, so it's wrong. Uh, this is E into E to the power. This is F. This is F. Okay. So if you just rearrange this one, this value is known from the earlier equation. You can get E to the power three by two. You can directly put this one, and one can calculate what is the total number of energy as a function of. Uh, now, uh, you know how to calculate the average properties of this one. If you are interested, you can calculate what is Vf velocity or Fermi velocity. So, V is given as, so kinetic energy is given as half m v square. If you are talking about Fermi level thing, this will be Vf square. So, we can easily calculate Fermi level energy by using the concept of statistical properties. If you are interested, you can calculate what is momentum, average momentum of the system. Now comes the next part, application of Bose-Einstein for the Planck's black body radiation. So the Planck's black body radiation was initially calculated from Planck's hypothesis and after 25, 26 years, uh, uh, Bose was able to calculate this black body radiation by using statistics. So again, the statistical concept was used by using same top sort of equation. Total number of particles is equal to distribution function into density of states. You can integrate over the range of E to E plus DE and you will get the total expression. Just look at this. So in this case, Fermi level energy, uh, sorry, in case of both science and statistics, alpha value is 0 and beta is given as 1 by k. So this expression becomes e to the power e by kt minus of 1. And again, uh, in case of uh, photons, when you are talking about black body radiations, we are talking about photon radiation. So there are two types of polarization available for the photon particle. This is given by 2 into that particular factor. And this was calculated momentum and then we are just converting this thing into energy form in, in terms of frequency. We know Planck's hypothesis was given as in individual photon energy is E equal to H nu and the momentum of the photon was given as H nu divided by C. One can calculate the total number of particles within the range of the frequency and frequency plus D2. Then again, you can integrate this one and one can find the total. If you are doing this thing 
at the end one can come out with this expression. So obviously this expression is similar which was calculated from the Planck's hypothesis. So this is the idea, this is the simple uh, systems we have taken to explain the properties of the bulk material by using the statistical methods. Now one important part is left which is known as the uh, concept of the classical limit of the, of the uh, quantum statistics. So we have one classical statistics and two quantum statistics. The Maxwell Boltzmann is the classical statistics whereas Bose, Einstein and Fermi data they are quantum statistics. But their distributions was almost similar. This is given by this particular relation. So here delta is 0 for Maxwell Boltzmann and delta is minus 1 for Bose Einstein statistics and delta is plus 1 for Fermi data statistics. But if you see this particular curve when the uh, alpha plus beta value or one can think about the temperature is very very high, then the, the distribution functions are almost similar at very high temperature. So one can think about at high temperature and low energy density, the quantum statistics tends to the classical statistics. So in that sense, classical statistics is not the wrong thing, but it has its limitations of that particular sense. We can have some approximation to get the classical system. Now, uh, at the end, we will talk about some important part from this three different statistics, which is known as thermodynamical probability. So, when you think about thermodynamical probability, this gives you the idea about the most probable one. Most probable one for different uh, thermo different statistical system we have different thermodynamic probability and that probability is different from the different systems. So we can one can remember the distribution functions uh, one can uh, remember the thermodynamic probability is given by this W. Now I'll come to this point we have just assumed a, a simple problem where we have taken two part particles. And they are arranged in three different cells. That means you can talk, you can just think about the different states. So, so one can imagine that we have three different states: one, two, and three. And you have given two particles. Okay. In one time, this is classical particles. Another one to quantum particles. This is uh, Bose, Einstein, and Fermi. As in, one can think about Boltzmann. Boson's and fermion particles. Now, how are we going to arrange these particles in different energy states? So, to do these things, we need to use the concept of thermodynamical probability. So, the formulas are given and we will try to calculate this. So, both signs things that um, first you start with Maxwell Boltzmann. So, the Maxwell Boltzmann statistics is simply gives you 2 factorial by 2 factorial 3 to the power 2. So, this is 1. Uh, this is 9, uh, 3 square, this is 9. Bose Einstein, this gives you 2 plus 3 minus 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 minus 1. So, this gives you 6 possibilities and for Fermi direct, this is 3 possibilities. So, what it gives? Uh, that we have 2 particles and 3 cells. So, how are we going to arrange? So what are the possibilities? You have 9 possibilities, 6 possibilities and 3 possibilities. So, let me just add. So for Bose, uh, for Maxwell Boltzmann statistics, that's in the uh, Boltzmann particles. So they are distinguishable particles, they are separable particles. So we are assuming the particles and A and B. And we are assuming the different states or different shells are given as cell 1, cell 2, and cell 3. And how we can arrange the particles? So it was mentioned that any number of particles can be arranged in any number of states. So just see, so we have just taken nine possibilities up here. We have placed all the particles here in one combination. We have all the particles here. We have one combination. We have all the particles here. We have another. We may have A and B in separate one. And this is flat. B and A, you can just interchange this one and you have to see. So there are total nine possibilities. So this is nine possibilities are known as microscopes. 
and the macro states are given by this one. Just see, so these are the similar type of arrangement. They are a similar type of arrangement over here. Now see here, the most probable one is this. As you have taken only two particles, so this macro states is the most probable among them. This is number three. So if you have large number of particles, one or few number of macro states will be much more fecal. This will finally define def defining the properties of this particular. So we have taken our first case of Maxwell equation. Then what is the possibility for Bose-Einstein? Look at this point. For Bose-Einstein, the particles are quantum particles. They are indistinguishable particles. You really cannot separate two quantum particles. So we are representing at A and A. They are similar type. But remember, in case of Bose-Einstein, you can arrange any number of particles in any number of states. So what you have done? You have placed two particles in one state. You have the combination. Then again, here you have and here you have. Now the possibilities are A, A, and zero. Uh, sorry, I have done a mistake. This will be zero. I think this will be A. Okay. Now see the possibilities. Again, you have this type of possibilities. The microstates. The microstate combinations are there. Actually, they are of uh, similar type of combinations. Now the total number of microstates is given by six. Now comes the last case. In case of Fermi Dirac statistics, again particles are indistinguishable particles, the quantum particles, but along with this, we have mentioned this one, they are following Pauli's exclusion principle. Why they are following Pauli's exclusion principle? Because they are anti symmetric with functions. So, the difference between Bose Einstein and Fermi Dirac is that in case of uh, Bose Einstein, the wave function is symmetric in nature. So, due to the symmetric properties so you can press any number of particles they are they look uh, different type of things. whereas if you are talking about anti-symmetric so this gives this must follow the Pauli's exclusion principle when this is following Pauli's exclusion principle this arrangement is accepted a a this arrangement is accepted one can think about the arrangement like a 0, A, this is Okay? But one really cannot place two particles in sets. So here we have the microstates and possible macrostates. So this is the idea about the statistical mechanics, where we have the concept of energy states, energy levels. So we have started with the concept of statistical mechanics, the basic idea about energy levels and energy states, the concept of macrostates and microstates, the concept of ensemble, the concept of thermodynamical probability, the concept of phase space and density of states, the important calculations. Uh, then we have just talked about different types of statistical mechanics, Maxwell Boltzmann, uh, then comes the Bose-Einstein statistics and Fermi Dirac statistics. Okay, uh, just important part: Maxwell-Boltzmann is a classical statistics, whereas uh, uh, Bose-Einstein and Fermi Dirac statistics they are quantum statistics. So obviously, the Maxwell-Boltzmann is distinguishable, and other two statistics they have the particle indistinguishable. Here we have wave function, here we have no wave function, so obviously there will be no spin. But for other cases, there will be wave function and its corresponding spins. But the basic difference between Bose Einstein and um, Fermi Dirac statistics is that wave functions are symmetric and anti symmetric for the Fermi statistics. The spin values are integral, whereas for the fermion, this is half. Now we have also uh, discussed about the concept of uh, distribution function, okay? And by using this distribution function, we are able to calculate some of the bulk properties. So here we have used 
for forming Dirac statistics at different temperature at a different temperature t equal to 0 and t greater than 0. So we have the distribution function and from this we are able to calculate what is the uh, average energy. Okay, so first you are, you are able to calculate what is the formulable energy and then we are able to calculate what is the average energy and we have used that concept to be able to calculate the other properties. Same way we can use the Bose-Einstein statistics and then uh, by using the concept of distribution function we can calculate the number of properties. And then finally we have come to it comes up with the uh, expression which was derived by the Planck's Planck body equation. Then we have discussed about the concept of classical limit uh, at very high temperature and low density. They are almost parallel to each other. They are behaving similarly. And then we have the idea about uh, the, uh, for me, uh, the distribution of particles in different statistics. We are able to calculate uh, the distribution uh, distributions, uh, the thermodynamical probability for Maxwell-Boltzmann, for Bose-Einstein and Fermi.